Hello everyone and welcome back to the third and final episode of our tab targeting system. Previously we've worked on actually creating the tab, tab targeting where we can actually tab between those who are closest to us and cycle through valid targets. In this episode we're going to make the camera change and adjust itself to showcase the current target we have selected and adjust as we cycle between different targets. So let's get started. So last time we were here, we were doing the target system based upon distance. So if I was next to this one, I hit tab, it will pick that one. Tab again, we'll pick the next one. Tab again, we'll pick the next one, and so forth. Okay, that's what we did last time. But as you can see, the camera doesn't do anything. It doesn't lock itself down or anything like that. So let's make that now work for us. So we're going to go into our player controller, and we'll create a tick event. And on the tick event, we want to make sure that we're only doing this if the current target has been set. So take current target out and convert to validate get. If this is true, that means we have a target, which means I need to find the look at rotation between me and the target. So we're going to get the controlled pawn. And its location. We just want to get the actual location of the target. And then we we'll do a find look at rotation. The start of the look at rotation would be the player character. So the controlled pawn would go into the start. And the target here would be the actual location. Plug into there. Okay. And that's going to give us our find look at rotation. So now I'm going to drag this out and do set control rotation and plug that in. Now, because we're setting the control rotation, on our third person character, the camera boom, which is the spring arm, it's been set to use the pawn control rotation. So this boom here will actually follow what I do in my control rotation. Okay. So if I go and push play now and tab, you can see my camera's locked on. I'm not moving the mouse or anything like that. It's just, I'm moving left and right. And cause control rotation, it's kicking in it will do this and if i jump in the air it will see it will follow it as well like so however one nasty thing about this is if we tab it's a it's a cut to it okay rather than a nice simple turn so let's make that a bit nicer to look at rather than just this jarring jump so let's go back to our player controller and on control rotation here i want to do an r interp 2 so R interp 2. And the find look at rotation is going to go into target. The current is going to be the current control rotation. So get control rotation and put that in there. The return value will now go into set control rotation. For delta time and, and interp speed, delta time we can just put in get world delta seconds. And interrupt speed will be just how fast you would handle the transition. So let's start with three and see how it goes. Hit save and let's go back to the game and see what that looks like. Okay, very nice. Not too bad at all. Now because I have added that interp to it, if I move the mouse, we do get this sort of rubber band effect kicking in. Okay. So we need to make sure our mouse does not have any impact over the control of the rotation. And also I think I want to keep the vertical aiming, I think. I think that would help. I'm going to keep that in place. So let's now go over to our player character. So what we're going to do is build a, uh, a way for us to determine whether or not we have a target been set recently. So we do that via an event dispatcher. So we're going to go into our begin play. And we're going to get the player controller and cast to our specific one. <clears throat> and on that one, we need to set up the event dispatcher. So let's just go back to my player controller and make an event dispatcher and do on new target and that's going to be called on target actor here so 
Wow, so here we'll make another one. Called on clear target. And you can probably guess where this one's going to go. We're going to go to clear target function and put that on there. Uh, cool as well. Okay, so let's go back to my third person character onto its begin play. And as my player controller, we can do bind event to on new target. And we're going to do create event. In this event, we're going to do a crutch, a matching event and call this one on new target. Okay, so this function is going to, this event, sorry, is going to get called every time we change target or select a target. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set a value on this about which, who is the current target we have. So I'm going to go back to my player controller, go to on new target and add an input to this. This will be an actor reference. Power that and save that. And if I refresh my um, target actor, it doesn't also, oh, if it doesn't appear, refresh it. Basically, there you go, see actor here. I'll plug in current target into that. And if I go back to my third person character, you will see now if I compile this, we'll get an error. Okay, that's because the signatures don't match. So it just means that we are missing that object reference on this event. So let's go to here, call it actor, and this will be an actor reference. Should now compile. Okay, so on new target here, on actor, we're going to promote that to a variable. And we'll quiz one count target. Yeah. Now we also want to bind it to clear target. So let's go up here and do on this bind event to clear target. Create event and choose create matching event on clear target and this is going to clear this value out so don't set it to nothing okay so that's going to do that so then i'm going to go over to my mouse inputs here so i don't want left and mouse left uh, left and right turning of the mouse to affect it when we have lock on so i'm going to go across to here and change the value from this to be a select and do select float and in here the pick a is going to be the current target and we're going to check if it is valid if it is valid it'll pick a which is this one so that'd be zero b will pick the normal access value okay so if i hit compile and save and test this out so normal movement with the mouse, like normal. But if I tab here, I can no longer move my mouse left and right. Still move it up and down, but I'm now locked into left and right. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for up and down. And to there, there, exactly the same. Okay. So now, when I go into the game, I tab and I'm locked down. I can't move my mouse. Okay. So at the moment, you can see it's, the camera's quite level with them. And I usually like to change the camera's position and angle, things like that, when we are locked on. Um, so let's take a look at how we accomplish that. We're going to go into our player character and go down to the on new target where we set the current target. It's up here. And in here, we're going to go to the camera boom. I'm going to change its settings here. Now it has a couple of settings on here, socket offset and target offset. We do want to change these. And remember, this is the thing as well that is using the pawn control rotation, not the camera. So we can rotate the camera and this will then follow suit. So on camera boom, let's first of all get this right. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to do set socket offset. And I'm going to give that an offset here of 50 in a Y and 50 in a Z. 
I'm also going to change its length as well. So set arm length to 200. And as I said, I want to rotate the camera as well. So I'm going to follow camera and set relative rotation. And I put minus 40 in the Y position here, which is the pitch. Like that. And when you do clear target, you just do the opposite to clear all that stuff off. So we'll just copy this. Set that to zero, zero, and it's back to 300. And follow camera, we'll set relative rotation of this back to uh, zero, 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 I believe it's that. Yep, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So let's go look at that in game, which play and our tab. Okay, so we've got kind of there. Obviously, angle is way off. I need to make my camera a lot, but a lot, a lot higher. So let's change the offset a little bit more. So on the Z here, I'm going to change it to 150. And let's see how that looks. Yep. Okay, that's not looking too bad. We uh locked onto that target turning around to them like so not too bad um might want to move the camera up a little bit uh or maybe change the rotation of it so it's not too steep and uh, so it's just a fine tuning game basically based upon kind of what you want to get out of it so I'll do minus 20 there not as steep change that's looking better okay that's looking much nicer tab go between each one and left and right will strafe around the object okay and there we go got a nice setup for the camera um now to clear the target is when we run away from him too much um so we're going to constantly check the distance between us and the target now for that we can use the targeter so let's go back to the targeter and on the tick event we want to check the distance of this now we are using tick because we want to check regularly but we're not going to use it on every single tick we're going to change the tick speed so let's first we'll get a distance calculation so we get the uh, get uh, distance two target with self other actor will be get player character and if that distance is greater then whatever the threshold is, we'll do 2,000. Okay. I want to clear, actually, now let's do 1,500. So when I go further than 1,500 away from it, we are going to clear the target. So the branch is compared to the condition for that. And we're going to clear the target on the controller. So get player controller cast to our player controller, my player controller. And from there, we can do clear target. And then you want to destroy the, uh, oh, sorry, destroy actor. Do we do that? Let's have a look. We can't remember now if we add that to the controller or not already. Clear target. Yes, we have. We're destroying the targeter. So that's all we've got to do here. Compile and save that. And as I said, we're going to change the tick rate. So if you go to class defaults, up here you see tick interval in seconds. Let's change it to 0 0.5. Okay, so every half a second, it's going to check our distance. So let's just pick one. Okay, and run away. There we go. I'm back to my player character. Normal. And I think back to normal over here. Hit tab. On the way. There we go. One tag targeting system. And there we go. We've now got our tab targeting system all set up. Now, as I said at the very start of the series, there are multiple ways of doing a tab targeting system. You could use screen space location or distance or any other method. 
we use distance. So if you're interested in learning other methods, please let us know in the comments below. I'm always interested to see what kind of things you guys are wanting to see. I want to say a massive thank you to all my Patreon members for supporting me over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. And they get access to all my videos early, including this series. So thank you so much for your support. If you're watching this and you've yet to subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. So thank you so much if you do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.